baptism is. Baptism is done for the forgiveness of sins, Acts 2.38. Baptism is done to save us, 1 Peter 3.21, Acts 2.40, Mark 16.16. 16. Baptism is done to wash away our sins, Acts 22.16. Baptism is done to be reborn to new life, John 3.5, Romans 6.3-6. 6, 3 -6. Baptism is done to clothe ourselves with Christ, Galatians 3, 26 and 27. All right. Well, we are excited, very excited for this, this final grand finale. So if we can have Brother Haney and Brother Eccles and Sister Walton come on up. We're going to get tonight started. So we're going to go ahead and start this off with Sister Walton tonight. And... This is just amazing because I'm thinking I met Brother Martin in 1997. I was 14 years old and he passed away, I believe it was four months later. And little did I know then what an impact he would have on my life, even though I just knew him for a brief time. But what he taught, Brother Eccles and Brother Haney and others, they've taught down to me and hopefully down the road I can help someone. So. I can already probably answer part of this question, but I'm going to ask you, Sister Walton. How have you seen your father's vision impact the church? His vision was that he could have at least 10 men to do what he had been blessed to do. And he had faith that everybody could do it. Uh, and there were 10 or more, and there were several that were able to go ahead and be able to help others like like you've been helped, and that's what's exciting to me. I just heard about that deal y'all made today, so it always puts a fire in you. Uh, it's good that it continues on. That was, uh, so he's been, my dad's been gone almost 22 years, and to see that it's still working, it is still blessing the church through the people that have done what he did either in land or it's also been in other fields people has done that and it's made the struggle that used to be for finances in the church to be I mean have y'all ever heard of begging for money they used to beg for money in church and now you never hear of that that's a foreign language I can see it doesn't even most of y'all don't even know what that means but they would literally take up a half a service begging for money because they needed it, even just for when we had the children's home, to feed the children's home. And I love that Pastor always says he feels like that our church has been blessed because that we did help those that were less fortunate. And it's exciting to see that it's still going on. Yes. That's exciting to hear. So, Brother Eccles, can you tell us how Brother Dean Martin got you into the land business? Well, actually, um, I went to Brother Martin. I had, let me back up and kind of give you some history. My family, my dad was a pastor, and we had uh, seen uh, the Martin family uh, over the years at camp meetings and this, this place and that. And um, everybody that I knew that knew him, they said, that's a blessed man right there. So... Anyway, come on down the, the road uh, to 1984, and this was, I'm talking, this was back in the late, mid to late 60s when we were seeing them at camp meetings, so, you know, 20 years later, uh, I moved up here to take a, uh, a position with the company I worked for, Debo Electronics, and um, I started coming to this church, and of course I knew Brother Holmes, I had met Brother and Sister Holmes, Elder Brother and Sister Holmes, and, and the family, and, and I knew the Martin family and some other families here, so it was natural for me to come here. But um, anyway, my wife, Margaret, and I had, uh, we got married in 1984, and we had, uh, both had uh, good jobs, and so we had a little savings, and we were thinking, you know, what what are we going to do? How can we make more money than just uh, putting this in the bank and drawing a little bit of interest. 
Uh, we were trying to figure out some, something to invest in. And, of course, naturally we knew uh, of, of Brother and Sister Martin and, and what they were doing. So we went to them and talked to them and said, well, we think we would like to get in the land business. We've got some money. At, at, at that time we had $5,000 saved up. So we want to get in the land business and uh, grow it, It'll grow this money, basically. So that's how we um, were introduced to them. And Brother Martin said, well, he said, I have a plan, and we call it wholesaling. And what we'll do is we'll sell you uh, a minimum of three tracts of land, and you take that. And run with it, and let's we'll see how you do. See if you can see if you want to sell land. See if it's for you. All these things. Of course, like Sister Faye's already said, he believed it was for everybody. And um, so anyway, that's how we got involved. We bought three tracts of land, and we started trying to sell them. And we weren't salesmen. <laughs> I was wasn't used to um, trying to sell people things like that, and. Uh, so I made uh, many phone calls to Brother Martin and say, well, it's not going very well or whatever. You know, what about this or what about that? Because I really didn't know much about the land business. But anyway, that's how I got started in it. You know, if we can pause for just a moment, I think we uh, kind of assume everybody knows what we're talking about when we say the land business and uh, what what they were involved in. Brother Haney, can you take a moment before we, we kind of get back into what we're doing and Kind of break down in, in elementary terms what we're talking about. Yeah, just in case you don't realize, Brother Martin happened into something that didn't exist. It was a business that never had been done before. He bought an 80-acre farm to just turn around and sell as an 80-acre farm. And a young man wanted to buy five acres of it. I think I'm telling the story right. You can correct me. But somebody else wanted to buy five acres, and somebody else wanted to buy five, and they wind up selling 16 five-acre tracks. The next farm they bought was to buy in order to go through and build a road and sell in tracks. And they sold them for $500 down, and back then it was around $100 a month. And people could make their payments straight to Brother Martin. They didn't have to have good credit. And um, so uh, that's that was the birth of something. As already been said, his desire was to be able to bless the kingdom of God. He wanted to be able to uh, finance everything that the church needed to do but it just couldn't seem to do it on the upholstery business. And we couldn't do it in our parse business. And the Lucases couldn't with produce. And the other families, Brother Lawrence with his garage. But the land business, you, do, you don't sell any $2 tracts of land. So it's it's a pretty good ticket when you sell a very many tracts of land. It, it can turn into a, uh, quite a bit of money. So what that means to you, you say, well, how can I get into the land business? That seems so foreign to me. I don't believe that the Lord just put that in this church for a temporary time. Although it could be a temporary time. You ever see a candle when the, the flame on it just starts dying down and finally it just flickers out and there's a little wisp of smoke where it used to be a flame? That very thing could happen with us. In less than four years I'll be 70 year old man. Brother Eccles is pretty close to me. And I won't tell Brother, Brother Clifton's age but he's 10 years older than me. What I'm <laughs> What I'm saying is that we're fixing to uh, we're fixing to outgrow that part of our work life, and so it's it's not. I don't believe the Lord's will for that channel of blessing that has meant so much to this church for the last 40 years to just go away like that candle flicker. I think it's His will for somebody else to pick up that baton and keep running this race and keep blessing this church with it. I believe that's the reason for this meeting tonight. Whenever I sat in Brother Martin's car, he looked me straight in the eye. He said, Brother Haney, I know that the money that you make off of this land, you'll use it to help the kingdom of God. But really, I was thinking about kind of banking it and stacking it up. You know, it sounded pretty good to me, kind of get a cushion built up in case something come along. He said, but I know that you won't just do that. He said, but you'll use it. You'll be a channel for the kingdom of God. That's what this was born. This land business was born. For that, and he stayed true to it. And I, I be honest with you, the best I can describe it, I, I'm not a, uh, what do you call it, where somebody has the spirit of discernment, but I felt a spirit of perpetuation, if I can describe it as that, in that car. 
he was, I didn't know about him wanting to have 10 men to put it over onto. That was in 1994, and he passed away in 97. It wasn't very long after that. So he put it in our, in our heart to do it right and to be able to be a blessing to the church. I would like to add a little bit to that. Um, actually, where my dad got the vision was from Rubel Holmes, brother Rubel Holmes, brother Holmes' brother. He, and I love this because he had, he just had the idea. And he said, have you ever thought about just going out from town and buying a farm and selling it? And my daddy, of course, never had because what he had had was the upholstery shop. And that's more, more like a mom-pop business, take you from week to week. And then we had the joy of 50 furnished apartments. And anyone that's never got to go to that boot camp don't know how to appreciate life. <laughs> I'm a graduate of that. But anyway, uh, my dad caught that, just that thought. And y'all know that pastor is really good to give nuggets. And that's what I'm always wanting to glean, catch that nugget. And so this was a nugget that my dad caught and he put it into action. He believed it, that he could do it. And he went forward with that vision in mind and it's amazing. It's He started that in 1976, so uh, actually 75. And to see what God has done with it is just amazing, and I think it can be even more because now we have more people that uh, are catching the vision. And I want to encourage you, if you don't do it in land, you can do it in what you're talented to do as well. That's so true. It doesn't matter what, what you have in your hands as long as you do it for the glory of God. Brother Haney, let's go back to you on that that question. How did Brother Martin actually help you get into the land business? Well, it was back in the 80s he tried to get me to do it. I think I just killed this one. He tried to get me to sell land back in the 80s. I said, Brother Martin, I just can't see it. Trisha and I were at Western Sizzlin, and they asked us to join them at their table, and he started explaining it. I said, well, it just looks illegal to me. Oh, Brother Haney, no. He said, it's nothing like, I said, well, it looks like you go over here to Russell Chevrolet and buy a new Silverado and sell it. You still owe GMAC the whole amount and you sell it to somebody else on credit. And he said, no, 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 it's not that at all. You're just selling a contract. You're just, it's legal. And, you know, lawyers have perused it and it's, it's, it's all above board and legal. That's why I'm sure it is or you wouldn't be involved in it. But I, I just can't see it. You know, some people just can't see the Godhead. It's just, they can't see it. And so when Brother Newberry sold seven farms in seven months, Sister Patricia Haney said to me, we're buying a farm. So I called Brother Martin, and I said, uh, I said, my boss says we need to buy land. He said, well, when can I pick y'all up? I said, we're ready now. He said, I'll be right there. So he picked us up and drove us out to Frenchman Mountain, had 80 acres out there. I said, well, I'm going to tell you, I'm buying the 80 acres, but I'm not buying it for the profit. I'm just buying it to go through the motion and see how it works because I still can't see it. So that's when he got me started. He said, Brother Haney, I'm going to tell you something. If you get involved in this, selling these, this 80 acres, and you don't like it, he said, then I'll take it back, and it won't hurt your credit any. Now, he had a rule. Whatever people paid you, you didn't go to Branson, and you didn't buy a four-wheeler. You didn't spend the money. Everybody say, you didn't spend the money. And he said... So if you want to let it go back, you just give me all the money that's been paid to you, and I'll take it back, and you'll be right back where you were. Well, Brother Seth Pomeroy, he come along and asked me, he says, how does that work? I said, Brother Martin said, don't spend the money unless you use it on another farm or building a road or and putting it back into your business. So that's what Brother Seth Pomeroy did. He kept doing that, doing that, and one day he come back and he said, uh, uh, when, what is the cutoff date on that particular rule when you can start spending some of that money? I Man. said, there's an answer to that. And it come from Brother Martin. He said, it just depends on how big you want to grow your company. If you want to level off, you got it as big as you want it to go, start spending the money. But if you want to keep growing the business, keep selling your car parts, keep working at Devo, keep upholstering, and keep pouring that money back in to the land business. He waited 10 years. I tried to wait that long. He kept putting money in it. He kept put, putting money in there. 
Well, it's ironic that I get to ask this question because all three of these up here have mentored us among other people in the church, but Brother Eccles, we'll start with you. And this is so powerful. Who's ever tried to do something? He just thought, man, I can't do that. It, it just seems impossible. I mean, how do you do the paperwork? That's always, to me, in a business, the hardest part of the struggle. Well, guess where I went for the first paperwork? I went right to Brother Haney's living room or his office, and he typed up that very first contract. And I'm going to tell you, every form, well, probably 80% of the forms that we have, when I had a problem, I'd say, Brother Haney, how do you deal with this? He said, if you'll come by, I'll leave it in the mailbox. And I took that for him. And now I've got a portfolio of just paperwork that he paid an attorney to do. And then he just gave it to me. So that's, I mean, that's how this works. So they've done this, what we're going to talk about next. And by the way, I told Brother Haney one time, if he had a dollar for every question I've asked him, he could probably retire off that. Especially for every minute he spent on the phone with me on these things. So anyway... Uh, starting with you, Brother Eccles, how can you mentor someone like you were mentored? Well, uh, one thing is you have to be willing to pass on the gift that you received. Uh, like I was telling you earlier, the many calls that I made to Brother Martin, you know, what about this? What about that? How can we do this? How do I do that? Um, I have always tried to help anyone that was thinking they were going, wanting to get in the land business or that was already in the land business uh, by giving them my um, experience. Basically, I would tell them in whatever situation they were in, I, I would say, well, if, if I were in that situation, here's what I think I would do. And then, of course, I've also uh, I told a lot of people, you know, all the different phases of the land development business. And I have told some of them that it, this may not be for you. This may not be something you know you want to get involved with. Uh, obviously, it, it requires uh, a layout of some money, some hard-earned money. And sometimes, thankfully, not very many times, but sometimes you're going to lose that money. So that's uh, those are all things that that you have to consider. But anyway. Um, in the mentoring part of it, I just try to do like Brother Martin would do. You know, he would help us in any way he could think of to make something work. So uh, I've, I've been willing and am still willing, uh, as Brother Haney was saying there, in our older age, which I'm not near as old as Brother Haney is, <laughs> but still willing to uh, help in any way, be glad to... Uh, to talk to you about if you find a farm that you're thinking about you're wanting to do or find a small track of land or whatever. I'm more than willing to help you any way I can. One quick comment. The Bible says Caleb was 80 when he went to take his mountain. So what are we talking about this for? Actually, my dad didn't even start till he was 50, which a lot of people think they're going down the hill. That's right. So, Brother Haney, no more talk like that um, for another 10 or 15 years, then maybe. Could you answer that question? How can you mentor someone like you were mentored? Well, I did write down a few things on that one. Number one, uh, you're not going to get rid of the risk. You need risk. Now, Brother Martin took a lot of risk out of for me by he, – he would wholesale land. He would go out here and buy – Several farms, put the roads in, develop them, put the water line in, survey it. And then, as Sister Walton said, you could buy a minimum of three lots, or Brother Eccles would buy an entire farm from him, and I bought that Frenchman Mountain Farm. So the risk was all his. I mean, you could, you may go out there and risk your work, and there is some work. You know, you don't just, like one person that bought a farm from him called him, won't know when he was going to get out there and put her signs up. <laughs> <laughs> so there's some work into it, but the number one thing before you can you need the forms, before you need the contracts, before you need any answers to many questions, you need to find a workable form. I farm. I have two folders. One of them says non-workable farms, and the other one says workable farms. 
the non-workable, obviously, if something gets underwater, uh, you can maybe put cows on it or plant some kind of crop or rice, but you're not going to be able to put septic systems in there and people pull a home in there and live on that property. Or if it's on the side of a bluff, you know, the Corps of Engineers may could hang a mobile home on the side of it, but our customers are not able to do that. So finding a workable farm, farm what Trent's saying for him? Once you find that, just like the one that Brother Pomeroy found this last week, two weeks ago, you already have an asset right then. If you can't get money at the bank, there will be somebody in this church that will buy that farm and go in halves with you, and you'll, you'll get half of it, and they'll sell half of it, but you'll, at least you'll, you'll be off and running. If you get a good workable farm, you've got an asset right there, finding a farm. Then once you find the farm, somebody did it for us. They took us to the bank. They gave us the phone number of a good dozer man, a good water line man, a good surveyor. They gave us their experiences, Brother Eccles said. This is the way I would lay it out, but here's another option. Here's another option. You can look it over and kind of customize it to your own taste. So we... In this church, there's all these answers that people will give you if you run into problems that Brother Martin didn't have that asset, that he couldn't run to people in the church that had already run into that situation. So um, w one more thing. When you start looking on the Internet or through realtors or just Brother Daryl Newberry told me one time, he said, Steve, don't just drive straight down the interstate. He said, get off the, onto the old highway and then get off onto the shortcut or long cut back through the gravel road and through there. And I have found, I can't tell you how many farms, I could figure them up, by an old sign hanging on a fence that was not listed with a realtor, it was not on the Internet, just somebody went out there and hung a sign on the side of a fence, and I wind up buying the farm. And I told the class one night about one that the man drove by and saw me sitting out there waiting on to meet one of my buyers, potential, and he said, why don't you buy my boy's farm? I thought his boy probably had an acre or two. I couldn't do anything with that. I said, well, how much has he got? He said, 80 acres. Well, I kind of perked up a little. I said, where is it? He told me. I said, uh, well, I've got to meet some people. As soon as I get through, I'll run over there and look at it. So when I got through with my people, I went over there to look at the farm. It was the Garden of Eden. I mean, it had a stream with waterfalls in it, and woods and meadows. and Beautiful. A yeah, workable farm. And so... I went back over there and I thought, well, surely, I'd ask him how much he had to have for it. He wanted a thousand acre, 80,000. 80, and I thought, well, I must have made the wrong turn somewhere. I didn't write down the directions. So here he had a loaded trailer of hay when he come through the first time and coming back through, his trailer was empty and he come back over. So what'd you think of my boy's farm? I said, well, I think I must have turned left when I should have turned right. He said, well, I'm going right by there now. You'll feel him follow me over there. So I got in behind him. Well, it was the right farm. And so I got that farm for, I told him I could give him 75000 <laughs> So I got it for less than a 1000 an acre. And uh, anyway, just get out of the house, I told people sometimes. That you'll, you'll find deals, but you won't find them sitting in the den in the recliner. You've got to get out there and get on, get on the phone and, and find a farm. That's the main thing. Once, you know, you, we're glad to mentor you, but finding a workable farm... That's the one thing somebody's not going to do for you. They find a workable farm, they're going to keep that farm. But if you find one, they're, they're a little tougher. And those kind, I said, that are non-workable, they're still out there for sale. And so I've had people call me and they'll say, uh, Brother Haney, I found a farm, uh, maybe with a realtor, sent them a notice or on the Internet or somewhere, and it's at such and such a place. I say, you don't even need to go there. Uh, you know, that thing's been for sale for 20 years, and I've, I've been all over it. It's horrible. It won't work. So a lot of those old, they just keep, keep them on the market, keep them on the market, keep on trying to sell them. And, um, and then another thing is uh, my, I've helped my son and my son-in-law and my daughter to, uh, to do some development and, so my son said, well, Dad, we, we need to know, you know, I'd say, well, now, as soon as you get this survey, you need to send a copy up to the electric company and send a copy up to the 911 people so they can assign the addresses and so the send a, uh, electric company can start engineering where the poles are going to go and send a copy to the water line engineer. Well, right, 
We need to write, you to write down what to do, one, two, three, and A, B, C. I said, you'd be writing it down. So when somebody is helping you, write down those Dozer men's names and phone numbers. Write down those steps, one, two, three. And uh, the customer. Oh, yeah. But I'm going to tell you, if you, get, if you get a sorry Dozer operator or a sorry surveyor, you can treat him bad if you want to. Because he's sorry and he's not in much demand. But if you want the best, if you want the cream of the crop, somebody that's really going to be an asset to your organization, you're going to have to treat them really nice. I'm talking about something for Christmas and something in between Christmases and just and your attitude. I mean, I'm not trying to preach right now, but I'm just saying, do what? Well, if they, if, like I've heard some of them say, well, I won't work for so-and-so. Well, man, they lost a real asset to their company because that, that, that guy was the best. So it's just a, I'll help you with the forms and stuff. I won't give you much rebuking. <laughs> well, this, this whole module has been the, the Hebrew secrets, how the spiritual connects to the natural. So, Sister Walton, can you tell us, and you, you kind of mentioned earlier the, the upholstery and life before this, but... Can you tell us how you watched the blessings of God open in your lives as Brother Martin made that connection? Yes, most definitely it did. And I think the best testimony is that he was able to help other people. And then that just kept on giving, isn't it? And I, what I would like to encourage anybody in whatever you decide to do is keep your hand open. I mean, the, t- the time that you get greedy, and I've watched it over and over and you think, well, I'm just going to hold this in my little hand, and this is going to be mine. Once heard a person, when they got into land development, they got a big, the first uh, customer they had gave them thousands of dollars, which they owed 10 or more times that. And they thought because they got that cash, they were going to put it in a little box, and they, that was going to be their money. Well, I said, you know what? Really, you don't have any money. If you've got a tenth to stash in your box of what you owe. And and plus, it's like the Bible taught, it's when you use it, that's when you make money. It's not when you just, and it really is an investment. This is really an investment company. I was telling that to Brother Haney before church, before he started talking tonight. I said, you know, land is our commodity, but really, it's an investment. And when you're making an investment, you don't plan to sell one one thing, no matter what business you're in, and then you go spend the profits on that. Then you're going to be out of business. So it's keeping on peddling, keeping on keeping on putting in uh, more than thinking, what can little red wagon can I buy with this? And one thing I want to insert in here. The most valuable thing I think that you can have in any business that you have is, and Brother Haney touched on it, your reputation. You can't buy that, but you earn it. And that's from day by day. And, you know, that's one of my treasures of my dad, even though he's been gone over 20 years, that his reputation, not only in the church, but out in the world, is still standing. And that's, money can't buy that. So, Make sure when you're building your business, you make, you build your reputation. Don't think I'm going to ch- cheat them and I'm going to make some big bucks. Well, you know, that's going to be gone, but your reputation is going to live on. So not only are you representing yourself, you're representing God and you're also representing our church. So I would love to encourage you to be sure to, to keep your reputation. That, that will be your most valuable asset, and probably better than a bank loan. <laughs> so one thing they said about Brother Martin over and over again was by doing this, he created his own competition. But if you look at it, he never missed a beat. You know, he did really probably way more than he could have by creating his own competition. And I think it's just, you know, I really think that's one of the biggest parts of the Hebrew secret 
is because it goes with Solomon's prayer, wisdom, understanding, and that large heart that Brother Martin had. And so we're going to follow back up on this mentoring business. So, Brother Eccles, what would you be willing to do for someone to help them get into the land business? Well, as I stated earlier, you know, I've been willing since uh, the beginning when I started in the land business, but obviously I didn't have the knowledge at that time and all, but, you know, I I want to pass this down to uh, to this generation because, you know, I keep thinking, you know, my, my grandchildren are here now, and one of these days we're going to be across the road over there, and we're going to need people to pay tithes and pay offerings and to build, put in a building fund and all that, to build what God has for us over there. And who knows what all is going to be over there. So, um, like, uh, like I said, I'm, I'm very willing to help anybody. If, if you've got some money that you want to invest, like I was talking earlier, um, you know, thinking back uh, over the years, I've, I've been doing this myself uh, a little over 30 years now, uh, with, started with Brother Martin back then. But, um, you know, when, when I, was, I was working a job and um, we didn't have a lot of extra money, we, once we started having a family, you know, they would uh, take up money for different projects like Sister Faye was talking about. Uh, back in the earlier days, and people would give, and I would kind of, you know, feel like, well, Lord, you know, I really don't have, I don't have that thousand dollars or maybe even five hundred to give on whatever project was going on. But uh, you know what? I said one day, you know what? I do have, I have my own, I have time, and so came along when we actually moved from number 152nd place to this building right here. And this is where my blessing started, is when we moved into this building, well, actually before we did, uh, we were building this, and uh, I spent many, many hours, many days up here putting in all kinds of uh, wiring for the heat and air control systems, the sound systems doing all kinds of stuff, and my wife can tell the story better than I can um, about the amount of time that I spent up here, but I was doing that towards the kingdom of God. I knew that God was going to bless me, and sure enough, it wasn't. It was while we were in this building right here that actually I bought my first farm. Like I was telling you earlier, I, I bought three tracts of land, then I went back and I bought three more tracts of land. And uh, I really wasn't convinced that that was the thing for me because there, there wasn't the, the profit, obviously. But there, was, there was money coming in, and uh, we could, we could kind of see that. But um, when we were in this, when we were doing this building right here, Brother Martin was with us. Uh, we were actually a, a group of men were going to look at some church property. And he started telling me about this farm, and I know I'm kind of getting off the subject, but I, w- I want to get this in. But he, he said, you know what? He said, I'll sell you that whole farm instead of just a few tracks of it. He said, I'll sell you that whole farm. And I don't even remember what the figure was, but it was way up there. <laughs> and I said, well, I, you know, Brother Martin, I don't know. I can't do that. He said, well, I'll, I'll finance it for you. He said, uh, you know, you've been a good payer up to now, and I've, I've kind of seen that, that you really want to do this. And he had, he had been over the, the last several years, any time I would see him, he said, I want to get you in the land business. I want to get you going. He always uh, wanted me, you know, he, he understood that uh, he thought that I had the uh, capability to do it. But anyway, back to the, the mentoring part. You know, I, I'm very willing to do whatever if I can help someone. Like I said, if you've got some money that you want to invest in this, um, the, the land is still out there. 
it's still just as good a deal as it was back then. Uh, times have changed. Regulations have changed. All kinds of things like that have changed. But um, it's still one of the best investments there are. And uh, I'd be glad to help anyone, um, not only, you know, talking to them, but if they've got money to invest, then we can talk about that. Brother Haney, can you talk to that for a moment? Brother Martin was a businessman. He was a, a honest, straight shooter, but he he was he was in business for business, and and there was risk in the land business. So if you want to get in it, it it's everything that we've told you it is. We're not building it up some kind of pie in the sky business. And you don't have to, in fact, he would tell you don't quit your job. Keep on, keep on doing whatever you're doing and, and you put this money right back into the land business again. <clears throat> I've been asked and did drive to Summerall, Mississippi and look at some people's farms down there at Brother Clint Bourne's church and some people from Brother Wesley Jackson's church in Generette, Louisiana. And I've driven around different places in Arkansas looking at people's farms that they had picked out. Some of them were workable farms. They got bought, developed, and sold. And some of them, uh, I didn't recommend them buying the farm. And somebody gave them my idea how to lay the road in. They did it sometimes exactly like that and sometimes not. But uh, I don't really recommend going as far as Mena and Jonesboro and places like that because you've got to go put a sign back on a track at Jonesboro and then you got to go put a sign back on a track at Mena, you're going to be on the highway all the time. Well, Brother Haney, kind of what, what's the outer perimeter for you? About an hour and 15 minutes I can be to any development I've done. Houston, Arkansas, which is over across the Toad Suck, Lock and Dam, Perry County. Quitman, uh, Judd Sonia, I've done south at Malvern, Bismarck around north of Greenbrier at Guy, and uh, just about an hour and 15 minutes. So if you find something that you think will work, you know, the first thing I like to do is just maybe look at it on Google Earth. You know, we didn't have Google Earth. <laughs> now when people call on the phone, they'll say, I'll start to give them the direction. And they say, no, just give me the address. I said, well, it's number 123 ABC Street. And they'll say, well, does the pond, is the whole pond all over on that one track? Or is the barn? And I say, how do you know about that? I'm looking at it now on Google Earth. I say, well, it's a different day for me. <laughs> I've had the surveyors put my road right through the pond, right through the barn. You know, because we didn't have Google Earth. We just had to get out there and like pull a 300-foot tape measure and try to figure where the thing's going to land before they actually got out there and started shooting the road in. They'll do anything on paper. And then when you get out there to the physical property, it's a different story. <clears throat> but the main thing, uh, to me, you don't need help right now in writing up a contract. You don't need help in sending out past due notices. You don't need help in dealing with the forms and all the uh, legal end of it, or even the, who the dozer man is. What you need right now is to find a farm, a workable farm. That's where we need to get you to, to the home base before you start running to first base. And so where do you find them? You drive those back roads. You get on the Internet. You call a realtor. You, you ask somebody you work with. You don't know anybody that's got 20 or 30 or 60 or 70 or 80 acres, do you? I have people call sometimes and they'll say, uh, do you have anything? My cousin bought land from you, but I'm needing something over by uh, Lone Oak. And I'll say, well, I don't have anything around Lone Oak right now. But I tell you what, if you find a bigger farm over there, if it's 60 acres or 100 acres, and you're only needing three or five, if I can use it, I'll buy the whole farm, and you can pick out the three or the five that you want, and I'll sell it to you and finance it for you. And it'll help you, and it'll help me. Because I wear my truck out, my rear end out, driving all over the place, looking at stuff that won't work. So whenever they whenever they call back, and I, sometimes I'll go look at what they had. I can't use it, but I can use the one that's across the road from the sign over there. So just just get out of the house and and ask people, ask your cousin, ask your uncle. Brother Martin did that. He I'd be around and he'd say, Daryl Newberry, you, uh, you don't know anybody that's got a farm? I said, Well, my, yeah. 
my uncle's wanting to sell his farm right now. He's, you want the cows too? And um, so just just start shaking the timbers, rattling stuff. Find out. Get get something started. Make something happen. Now you know what? I'm fixing to get me a notepad. Like some ideas come, and I'm fixing to start doing some of these things. I'm fixing to make this thing come to fruition. It's one thing to say. My dad used to tell a little corny joke about nine copycats sitting on a wire, and one took a notion to jump off how many was left. Of course, we'd always guess none because they were copycats, and he'd say all nine of them were left because he just took a notion to jump off the wire, which is a corny little kindergarten joke. But but the point of it is a lot of people take a notion, but they don't ever do anything. They never, you know, the next thing you know, it's May or June, and they say, you know what? I sure meant to get after that. I, I was going to do that. I was going to, I was going to try to rattle some cages and get something found. And then once you do find it, it may not be a hundred percent guaranteed. Yes, it's going to work. But if it will work, then you're about 90% of your own the way. Now it's going to be some risk and it's going to be some hard work. You'll get some ticks. You'll get some chiggers. You'll get some poison ivy. You'll get some blisters. You'll get some sweat. Everybody else will be going to Branson and you'll have to go meet somebody and get their $500. But I'm going to tell you, uh, like Brother Martin told me, I'd tell Brother Seth right now, if you don't like it, Brother Seth, I'll buy all your land business from you. You don't want to see <laughs> So main thing, you got to do that first. Nobody's going to go find the farm for you. you got to do that. As many people as are in this room, somebody's going to find a farm. Once you find the farm... Man, Brother Eccles, Brother Haney, Brother Looper, Brother Newberry, Sister Walton, and on and on. Brother Zimmerman, there's just, just a, I don't know how many people. Brother Pomeroy, they'll, they'll help you with anything you need and maybe more help than you want. Okay, I'm going to add something here. Uh, we're talking about Brother and Sister Martin. You know, I was blessed to, to be with him a few times riding around in the country. He would be showing me a, a farm that he had or whatever and, and he said, oh, Brother Eccles, uh, I think, you know, if you bought this farm, you could make, uh, um, you know, $100,000, or I'm just throwing that figure out. And uh, generally, always, uh, Sister Minnie Bell Martin was sitting in the back seat, and she would say a little thing. She said, plus interest. And that didn't really catch on with me. Of course, you know, I'm, I'm an engineer, and, and I don't think things like that. But my wife uh, has an accounting degree, and, and it, her eyes would perk up. And anyway, after we were in it a few years, we started looking and say, wow, you know, these people that are buying these tracks from us, say we sell a track for $20,000 over um, 15 years, maybe 20 years, depending on how long they financed it for, you know, we would make uh, what the amount of money that we were going to make on the front end which might be, say, $15,000, $15,000. But after you did that interest thing for a few years, then you would double or sometimes even triple what you were going to make on that. So, you know, it didn't take me long. I figured out, well, that was the big end of the deal. That wasn't the little end. And uh, that was that's, that's just something that was so funny. Uh, they were a, a great couple together, and they always made you laugh. But uh, that was one thing that she she taught us, plus interest, and that's the big part. The one side note, um, he mentioned, Pastor mentioned last night about the four lepers. He said we're kind of like the four lepers. And if you read Brother Martin's book, he was all about helping someone who had already ruined their credit. He said, let's get you on a plan. Let's rebuild your credit. And let's help you out. And if they prove themselves to be faithful, he would help them. And so one thought I had, you know, there's everyone represented probably in this room. But just because maybe you do have a, a, a bad spot on your credit, don't let that stop you. Go find the farm. You know, those lepers, they didn't have a thing going for them. Not one thing going for them. But they went out there. They found it. Someone's got good credit that can help you get that farm. You know what those lepers had? They had the sound of their footsteps. And God took the sound of the footsteps. And those Syrians said, not only is the Samaria 
coming with the Israel army, but they've hired the armies of all these other countries to come. That scared them to death. So the point of the story to me is, if you're out there doing something, trying to make something happen, like the lepers did, they said, why sit we here and die? You know, if we stay here, we're going to starve to death. We go up there, all they can do is kill us. We're going to die anyway. Get up and do something. And then at least there's something there that God can bless. You know, if you put some corn in the ground, he can bless it. You may get a stalk and several ears off of it. But if you just, he said that if, as long as it abideth alone, you know, if it doesn't die, it just stays there. So main thing is do something. Make, make some footsteps if you're a leper. Make something that God can bless. You're going to be a channel is what you're going to be. We are just, I'm just saying, I, I'm going to tell my story. Can I do it real fast? <laughs> you know, when you're broke and the church needs help, and the missionary needs help, man, your heart is big as this building. God, if I had money, I'd build up every place in Africa that they need a building. I'd build them one everywhere in Brazil. I'd build them a building everywhere. I'd, I'd dig them wells. I'd just some missionaries. If they wouldn't need to ask for another dollar. I'd, if I had it, I'd just do it all. <laughs> so the missionaries came to camp meeting, and they were going to take up an offering each night for a missionary a different country. And I wanted to give $1,000 to each one of those missionaries. I don't know why that magic number just it just seemed like a the golden goal for me. But I couldn't swing it. I couldn't cover the check. Well, you know, most time when you can't do any can't do the big thing, you just you just don't do anything. So now I guess I'll lose my blessing for telling, but I'll go ahead and confess. But I wrote a check for three hundred dollars to each one of those missionaries. And next year, it was $1,000 per missionary. Well, I, I mean, I don't know that it made any difference in the missionaries. But it did make a difference in me. And I realized I can feel myself being a channel. God set this business up not so I could stack it up. I got something I want to read to Brother Martins here if we have time when we get through. But it's about him saying... The purpose of it is not to bank or keep, but to help the kingdom of God, especially Brother Martin's own church to prosper financially. Anyway, that's, that's so good. Was that it? We're, we're, we're wrapping up now. That We're actually uh, we're, we're kind of running out of time. So can all of y'all take a moment and just, are there any other thoughts you'd like to share? Brother Haney, we'd like to have you go ahead and read that. This will be my last one, then I'll read that. It was at number 152nd place, and Brother Joel Holmes had a blue Lincoln Continental that had 350,000 miles on it, and it was falling apart. And one night, midweek service, Brother Terrell Bill got Brother Joel Holmes to go outside during testimony service to show him a gutter that was about to fall. And he said, this could hurt somebody. And while he was out there showing him, Brother Dale Sopper had been leading testimony service, and he stepped aside, and my Uncle Harold got up there, and he said, Now, Brother Holmes' car's getting too many miles. He told him it's falling apart. He said, We need to get him a car. So he's outside right now. He doesn't know about it. We don't have much time. He said, Can we get this money taken up? And just before he could get through looking at the gutter, they took up $30,000 for that car. So Uncle Harold sat back down. Brother Dale Sopper went back up there and started having people testify, and they they gave Brother Terrell Bill the signal, and he brings Brother Holmes back in. Brother Holmes has no idea what's happened. The church took up money to buy him a new car. So when Brother Dale Cypher gets through, and Brother Holmes comes up there, and he says, uh, uh, we're glad to have a visiting minister tonight. I want him to come up and greet the congregation. So the visiting minister came up, and he first words out of his mouth, he said, I just want you all to know I think you all taking this money up for Brother Holmes a new car is wonderful. And you could hear, no, it wasn't laughing. You could hear a <gasps> thousand people sucking in wind. And he said it again. He said, I mean it. I want y'all to know I think y'all taking up this money by Brother Holmes' this car. A new car is wonderful. And they all gasped again. So he testified and he sat down. Brother Holmes gets up there. Well, everybody just on the edge of their seat wondering where is he going to go with this and just wondering what in the world is going to happen. And Brother Holmes said, i tell y'all what I want to do. He said, I can get some more miles out of that car. 
And he said, our church bus is just wore out and dangerous. And he said, I found today a bluebird bus that I can get for that amount. And he said, that's what I want to do. Well, you know how you all usually clap and cheer and back him and support. And yes, and go do it. Nobody said a word. He said, well, y'all don't get rebellious on me now. He said, you've always let me do what I want to do. No excitement, no enthusiasm, no support. I told all that story for this line right here. My life changed with this next sentence. Her daddy stood up, and I'm, I'm, bringing, I'm, I'm honoring Brother Martin and Sister Martin. And he said, Brother Holmes, I feel like we can do both. And when he said that, that place went up like in flames. People were excited, thrilled, and that's exactly what they did. I I felt like Elisha. I said, Lord God, if there's just a way I could just get a portion of that spirit over onto me, that faith. I can't think in that kind of vision. Please, Lord, just let it come over on me. I, I, I typed this out or printed it out because some of the people, Brother Martin's been gone 22 years. I thought they may not have a full picture and there's no way to cover Brother and Sister Martin. But it says, Dean Martin, 70, went to be with the Lord Saturday, November 22nd, 1997. He was born May 8th, 1927 in Faulkner County. He was an extraordinary person with a central focus around his church and his family. He always lived by the rule taught by his father, let your word be your bond. As a small boy, he was... Came back. As a small boy, he was ever accustomed to hard work. He began with a small box strapped to his back selling ice cream on the streets in downtown North Little Rock. You know, we get the conception, well, that's for Brother Eccles. That's for people with money. That's for people that's successful. Just keep listening. <clears throat> From there, it was a bicycle paper route. And later, he owned his own service station. For 37 years, he and his wife, Sister Minnie Bell Martin, operated an upholstery shop, working many hours day and night. It was not church. They were happy and made a good living for their family. For the past 22 years, Brother Martin developed land in Pulaski, White, Lone Oak, and Faulkner Counties. He established Dean Martin Incorporated, Martin Land Developing, Eagle Land, and McConnell Martin. His latest accomplishment was writing a book about his philosophy and life story, Living the Good Life. The good life wasn't just about making the money. The good life was about this church. That making the money was just a channel to support this wonderful, wonderful life. If you read his book, you'll, you'll identify what I just meant. He never took credit for his accomplishments. He always gave credit for his success to God first and to all of his wonderful friends that were in his life at the right time. He was a very giving and unselfish person. His dream several years ago was to help ten men do what he has done. It was not to be for the purpose to bank or keep, but to help the kingdom of God. I believe that's in hearts here tonight. Especially his own church to prosper financially. God has blessed him to help others and to see this dream more than fulfilled in his life. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Trust in the Lord with all your hearts, and lean not into your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your path. 
Baptism, then what? Baptism is a burial in water for accountable beings until the remission of sins, for salvation to get into Christ, to become a new creature, to get into the one body. Then, walk in the new life, study and grow, become a servant of righteousness, keep self pure, be an example, have faith in God, follow Jesus, put first things first, resist temptation, be faithful, and be fruitful.